1998, Fruitland started a program where we began to reconstruct historic landscapes. One of the sites we wanted to recreate was a Native American hunting camp. We wanted to use the evidence that we had for the landscape that exists here using traditional technologies like seasonal burning and uh, stone tools. Start with this side. We learned a number of things about yeah, native technologies. We learned that you can't always trust the 17th century documents to report accurately on how natives might have made traditional tools like canoes and the actual tools that they employed like fire and the way that they used fire. <laughs> I think it was also a learning experience for us and a lot of the visitors who stopped by when we were making the canoe to see actually how very effective a stone axe really is. You can see they're hitting spots and little bits of pieces are falling off and and you know so we're really chopping off chopping the tree apart an eighth of an inch at a time, a quarter of an inch at a time. And what what time is it now? About three o'clock? Four o'clock. Four o'clock? So this is about eight hours. We did about two hours of, was it two hours of chopping yesterday and then a couple hours of fire? Two hours, yeah. And then about, we've been chopping since 10 a.m. today and it's yeah. four o'clock, so. so. We've got a full day of chopping in today. That's another six hours of chopping, so eight hours. And there's two people chopping at least. Solid chopping. So, so that's really closer to 16 hours of chopping. Once it's on the ground, we'll probably use mostly fire to, to <laughs> shape the canoe. Over there. This is the hard part. Yeah, Whether we get the boat down, oh, yeah. we get the tree down tonight, we probably won't get it down tonight. We'll probably take it down next Saturday because uh -huh. we'll start again Saturday and finish it. This is a good size tree. <laughs> it's a huge tree. How, how long a boat? Do you try oh, to probably about to those 15, branches. 17 feet. Uh huh. We we think that this is about a hundred year old, 80 to 100 year old white pine. Yeah. We know it's a white pine, but. We're trying to keep this space open so that we can keep getting the axe in there because the axe is actually pretty wide. So we're continually sort of battering down here and, and then up, chopping in here cut. and then battering down in here and chopping back up in here. And get these wedges out. So we're trying, we're actually taking out a piece of wood that's, you know, two or three inches thick all the way through the trunk of the tree. 17th century reports say that the trees, the dugouts that they made could hold like 40, 60 right. people. Oh, they made huge they trees. They made huge. They took dugouts. huge trees and made enormous dugouts. Yeah, yeah. Yes, sure. the whole group of people could get in. But then again, you also saw small two-person boats and stuff too. When Native Americans were making these canoes, it was a communal activity. The whole group would get together and work on these things. They had to, which it's just so much work. And it was really it was really interesting when we were making this canoe at Fruitlands that people who had no idea that this was a project that we were gonna do here, they turned up when they found out about it and they stayed for days to help us. So I felt like the communal nature of our project really harkened back to those native people who made canoes too. What we're doing today is seasoning the log so that uh, it doesn't rot or check over the course of the winter. And um, we're sort of, what we did today was set up a pile of sticks along the base of the log 
uh, we lit a fire at this end and the fire has worked its way down to just about to the end of where the canoe will actually be. Um, the uh, canoe will be about 10 or 15 feet long. Once the seasoning process is done, we will start to burn out the middle of the boat and the underside of the boat. The underside of the boat, we're going to try to make flat so that it doesn't tip over as easily. And the top of the boat is going to be on, on the top of the log. There was a little debate of whether or not we should burn up into the log or down into the log. We've decided to burn down into the log uh, simply because we think we can control the fire a little bit easier. So we're going to burn down into the log to make the top, top of the boat burn underneath and scrape along underneath to make it flatter for the bottom of the boat. And once the boat's pretty much done, we're going to burn through where the fire is now and uh, then the boat will be done. We'll pick it up and bring it over to the river. Yeah, I think I think what we need to work on um, is is work on the ends of the boat. Uh, we'll open up the middle and take measurements, go in there and figure out where we stand in terms of our wall thickness throughout the body of the boat. And if um, we want to enlarge the the, the uh, interior of the boat, we'll do that first. We want to take it down so that we're at this width. So we want to take we want to take two inches this much out of that side and this much out of that side and that'll make that boat this much wider in this area. See what I mean? So that some of us big guys can get in. This ads right here is typical of what, what would look like a, a woodland gouge out of stone. It's just a metal hybrid. But the, 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 the gouge is something that's archaeologically often found uh, in woodland sites. Just scraping down the walls here, using this stick, and as I scrape the wall, the areas that are scraped will burst into flame. You can see the area that I previously scraped down here before I moved the fire down to the sand are all burning. So, so you're I'm moving the fire from one end to the other? Yeah, I'll move the fire and then I'll go down here and scrape and check thickness. And then I'll move the fire back down here and I'll scrape here and check thickness. So that way I can keep using my fire, but I can regulate the rate of burn. Because we're getting to the point now where you don't want to overburn and get too close to the edge. You can see we just have this whole big trough of fire. We're just going. Get over here. So I'll scrape this edge down. And so now we're burning both ends of the log at the same time. Burning your candle both ends. Right. Today we decided to test the canoe. We were all really excited, so we put on our grungiest clothes because we knew we had to pick up a 200 pound log covered in wet fat and get it into the back of a pickup truck to drive it over to the local pond. The dugout canoe handles differently in the water than the wider bottom canoes we use today, but has the advantage of always floating, even when the occupants roll out into the water.